Yeah, you can go ahead now. Oh, oh the recording started already. Yeah. Now, I think we are on. Um, good morning. My name is Lawal Aziz Kofikiola. I am the student union president of Kwasu. Um, it is nice to have us on board this morning. We will be having a visitor here with us. His name is called Mr. Odushola Ajide. He's from African Mentorship. Um, initiative will be giving us a lecture on how to sustain our business impact. But before we proceed, we'd like to appreciate us for joining this platform because it takes not just our joining but our participation to keep the platform working. So thank you for joining us. Our main motive for having this talk today is to improve our students on how to develop their businesses on campus and outside campus. It is not just enough to go to school. It is not just enough to participate in activities. We have to self-develop ourselves too. So that is why we are bringing this program on board. So for us to kickstart, I would like us to start with the second stanza of the national anthem in, in about five minutes, we should just read this in our mind and then we can start the program, the program properly. So please, second stanza of the national anthem now. And Justice Vane, thank you very much for joining us. If you are just joining us on the program, the program is called Sustaining Business Impacts, Sustaining Business Impacts Strategies and Techniques for Undergraduate and Postgraduate Students. It is a program that is initiated by the partnership of Students Union Kuala State University with African Coaching and Mentorship Initiative that is based in the United States. Thank you. So, no, we're in the United Kingdom. I'm in, I'm in the United Kingdom. United Kingdom. I'm so sorry for that. So, today we'll be having Dr. Odushola Emmanuel Ajide. He's a student of Kuala State Polytechnic, he's an indigenous of Kuala State. He had his MSc at Coverty University. He had his PG certificate at LGU, his PhD at LGU. He's a former lecturer at Robert Gordon University, United Kingdom. And he'll be the one giving us the lecture today. Thank you for coming on board, sir. Thank you so much. Very nice uh, so please, please, I would like you to please introduce yourself to the students. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a privilege and honor uh, to be with us today. Oh, Can you please meet me? I don't know where that's in which that's okay. So it's an honor uh, to be with us today. My name is my name is uh, Dr. Olushola Ajide. Um, and interesting, like the president said, I am from. For those I don't know if uh, some of us know, if you know, perhaps know where I come from. I am from a place called Igbo. That is in a fellow in local government, just of a dauphin for those who know uh, those particular areas that's where i'm from i schooled in uh Kora polytechnic i had my ond and hnd in Kora polytechnic i did a pg sat and um in Kora poly and went on to the perhaps i could just even begin to share my slides and 
because there is a section on my slide that uh, let me just go. Okay, that's it. So the so the so like I said, um, went to Quora Polytechnic, had my uh, my session there, studied business administration from Kuala Polytechnic and went on to, uh, after Kuala Poly, I went to serve in Anambra State and add another, a PG, I did a PG certificate program at Anambra State University. And from Anambra State University, I went to have my master's program, in Coventry University on management information system. And from, that program, I now here for my came here to the UK for my PhD in management. So I have a PhD in management, and part of what uh, we are putting together is to ensure. I'm trying to check if there's a there's a text. Uh, so, Mr. Lawa, yes, sir. I'm with you, sir. Continue to check the the feed the the, the yes, the, the feed, yes. The uh, I was trying to check. Sorry for that cut off. I was trying to check what was posted. Okay, in the chat, so that I I don't know. Yeah. So that's who who I am in the nutshell. I've been privileged. I've been privileged as uh, a person to you know, consult. I've consulted for businesses and not for profit NGOs in Africa, in Asia, and also in the United Kingdom. And I think that part of what we are, and my research principally is on corporate social responsibility and community engagement and part of what I corporate social responsibility as part uh, is part of giving back to the society to see what we can do particularly to my home state which is Kwara state to see how we can improve human capacity development and I was at, I was um, excited when Mr. Mr. Lava told me that we have can you please mute, mute yourself if uh, since uh, thank you so told me that quite a lot of uh, students in the Kuala State University are, are people who are into entrepreneurship so felt that this would be a good one to see how to add value so this session today quickly is how to add value to uh, what we are doing. All right, I think that's enough of me now. Uh, let me time myself. Mr. President has given me a very light uh, time. So let's go for it. Let's, let's go there. Like they say, do you understand that? Let's go there. Does anybody understand that? Uh -huh. We all do, I think. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm hoping I could mute everyone. Okay, let's go. Let's. Um... Okay, come on the box. All right. So, sustaining business impact. Kindly, kindly mute yourself since you're not talking, please. I'm trying, I couldn't locate uh, those people. Kindly mute yourself so there's no... Kindly um, mute yourself. Thank you. 
So sustaining business impact. So keep important questions. I think uh, from my own perspective and my own uh, point of view, there are some important questions that you need to ask yourself as a business person, as a person who is running a business. And I think this is very important. And please don't take it uh, lightly. These are important questions you need to ask yourself to be able to run uh, a, a sustaining business that would uh, make a positive impact. So the first, first question is, who am I? The question you need to know who you are, your identity. Who are you as a person? Understanding your identity and understanding who you are helps and goes a long way to help you to run a sustainable business. The second question is, where am I from? What's your source? And when I'm talking about your source, I'm not talking about um, the country where you came from or the community where you came from. I'm talking about understanding the fact that you are on this terrestrial ball uh, from somewhere. God created you. And I think that is good. When God is in your paradigm, it influences and changes the things and the way you do things and you run a business. The other question which you need to ask is why am I here? Why are you on planet Earth? Understanding why you are on planet Earth will also help you to be able to run a business that will be uh, sustainable and make a positive impact. What can I do? Is another question you need to ask yourself. What can I do? And that will go to the point of your potential. So if you're on this call and you are not ready to run in a business, understanding your potential would help you to know how to start and run a sustainable business. And if you're already running the business, also, yeah, that is good. But it will also help you to know that the kind of business you're running, to know your potential to be able to run an effective and sustainable business. And the last one, which is very important, is to know where am I going? If you leave this out, when you leave this out, where are you going? Understanding that, putting that in front of you helps you to be in shape to ensure that the type of businesses you are running and the type of way you are dealing with customers and clients are in, in, in sync with a sustaining business. And please, it's important, um, before I go to that, it's important that it's important that um, it's important that I ask this uh, question or I clarify this. When we talk of business, I'm not talking about nefarious business. We are talking about good businesses. I know you understand what I'm talking about. We're not talking about businesses that have negative effect, as it were, on the society. I'm not talking about businesses that run. That are, that are done in, that is against the law and order. I hope you understand what I, so when I talk about business, I'm talking about legitimate business, uh, a going concern that is legitimate, that is adding value to the society. I'm meeting positive needs in the life of people in the community. That's what I'm talking about. And also when I talk about impact, uh, I, impact is, def is defined as, you know, influence, making a positive influence in the life of people. In after fact, um, another dictionary meaning says impact is a marked effect or influence. So you want to run a business that is making a marked effect, a positive effect, a positive influence. So I'm not talking of negative impact here. We are talking of positive impact. So I just wanted to, to let you understand uh, where, what uh, we are looking at. So if you run a business, this is your first, I will engage in you, your first point of engagement. If you run a business, type one in the comment section. If you run a business currently, type one in the comment section. Uh, quickly do that. If you run a business, type one in the comment section, please. Please type one. If you run a business currently, type one yes, in the comment section. Yeah, thank you for that. So I've gotten about maybe five or five comments. 
So seven people. If you run a business type one in the comment section, so there are about seven people on this call who are running a business. So that's eight, the eight comments. Okay. Alunge Balikis raised her hands. Okay. Okay. Are you ready to give me your food? I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Let me take um, Balikis. You raise your hand. Go ahead. Balikis, you raise your hand. I hope you can all still hear me. It was a mistake, okay. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, let's continue. Sorry for that break. So we've done that. So the next thing I want to ask you, an important question is also this point. What does success look to you as a person? Please mute yourself if you're not if you're not speaking. Since you're not speaking, I'm not I'm the only one speaking. Now. Please mute yourself. So what does success look to you? How would you define success? What do you define as success? And also, how would you know when you have become successful? When you have attained, as it were, that's what you think uh, you are aiming for. Now, quickly, I just want to put this as a, a beginning point to quickly open your mind up for those who run business, about almost 10 of us who indicated that, and try to, I know this example might not be the kind of business you're doing, but to, to, to begin to create in our minds a point of strategizing and putting your mind together. So. We'll watch quickly, please. In this video, I'm going to share how you can build a sustainable business model. And I'm going to map out five key things you can do right here, right now, in order to make sure that the business model you're building will last you and support you for a really long time. <laughs> Creating sustainable business models is forward to you so that you can save yourself from making a lot of the mistakes that I made. So why is it important to have a sustainable business model? Well, if you're someone who wants to live a nice life and feel grace and ease and calm and peace, and if you're someone who wants to make an impact for a really long time, all of these things are served by you creating a sustainable business model today. So I'm going to dive into what that exactly means. And I think it'll help for me to share a little bit of my story with you and map out some business models on the screen or on the whiteboard so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about, what it looks like to have an unsustainable business model and then compare that to having a sustainable one. So when I started my coaching, consulting, training, speaking, whatever I can do to get a buck business, this is what to map out where all of my, my leads came from a lot of different places. Some of the things that I was doing, I was doing a lot of networking. So I would shake a lot of hands, kiss a lot of babies, get out to chamber events. I was constantly out in the world meeting people and trying to generate business that way. 
because I was doing a lot of networking and because I was positioning myself as a thought leader and a speaker, I also had a lot of opportunities to speak in front of audiences. Because of that, I generated a lot of inbound emails, phone calls, and other opportunities. So I was getting things coming in from all these different places. The thing to recognize here is that I was trying to serve all these different markets. I was basically, because I was coming from scarcity instead of strategy, I was taking any opportunity that came my way. So it's really an absence of a business model because I was doing so many different things. I was doing one-on-one -on -one consulting and coaching. I was doing training. I was doing speaking. I was running events. I was selling my time in half day chunks and full day chunks. And I even got a call once if somebody, somebody wanted to know if I would write the marketing, the labels for their shampoo bottles. And I took that job. So I did any number of things and that is the absence of a business model. And because I was doing all these things and because I was getting leads from all these different places, I also didn't have a system whereby things were funneling into one place and moving through a very clear path. So I didn't have a clear customer path. I didn't have a clear ways of marketing and selling. I was doing everything. And if somebody emailed me and asked me for my price list, I would email them my training price list. If they called me and, and wanted to buy my time, then I would try to sell them my time right there on the phone. Or if maybe they emailed me, I would, I would try right there to send them a, an invitation to an event. So all roads led to everywhere. It was a very confusing thing. And I, I was selling a whole bunch of different things on the back end. Now, obviously, this was unsustainable for a couple reasons. The first was that my revenues went like this. There were some months when I was making $30,000 in a month, and then there were months where I was making zero in a month. Now, obviously, that leads to some feelings of anxiety. It leads to more feelings of scarcity. It's hard to show up super energy rich and super abundant, especially as a speaker and in networking, because I was so concerned about money. Like, what's this month going to be like? What's next month going to be like? And because of that, I couldn't hire support. So I didn't hire support because it's hard to hire support when you don't know what your revenues are going to be next month. When you hire somebody, like an employee, even just a part-time employee, they expect to get paid every month. And I really wanted somebody to be in my business full-time or even part-time that was mine. But I couldn't make that commitment because I never knew what next month was going to look like. So for all these reasons, this model wasn't working very well. And so, and the reason I figured out that it wasn't working very well was because my business crashed and burned very quickly. About five years ago, I had a situation, a personal challenge in my life that led to me taking my eye off the ball and stopping doing all of these constant hustling and activities to drive business. What happened within a couple months, my revenues had dried up because I wasn't doing all the work that I needed to do to generate more. So instead, what I did was I actually met with a mentor and they showed me a new business model. And so in this new model, what I started looking at was a funnel approach. Now you've probably seen a lot of funnels before, but this one's probably going to look a little different than, than some of the ones you've seen. In this funnel, all roads started to lead to a new place. In this business model, all roads led to one thing, one meaningful conversation, basically a sales conversation. So from all the speaking and all of the events and all of the inbound calls and all of the inbound emails, instead of doing all this work, instead I would say, well, the way I work is we start by having a strategy session. And in that strategy session, I'll dive into, I'll learn a little bit about what you're looking for, and we'll check and see if we're a good fit to work together. And we might not be a good fit to work together. And if we're not, I'll let you know that too. And then I started leading all roads to a simple foundational program, which meant that from all the things that I did, instead of saying, oh, I could do training for you, I could do one-on-one, -on -one, I could do a half day, I could do a full day, I could write your shampoo bottle labels. Instead, it says, well, the way I work is I have this foundational program that all my clients start with. And in this foundational program, you'll get the base for starting and launching in this new direction. And then from there, we'll figure out what's the next best step to work together. And then, of course, this foundational program in my world, I made it a retreat, but you could make it something else. 
You could make it a six week online program. You could make it a two day event. You could make it any number of things. But the key is what can all roads lead to first? What is a way that you can have all of your efforts lead into one core product or program? And then, and here's the part that solves this problem and this problem. Then from having a foundational program, this road leads to our big back end. And a big back end has three key components. A big back end has monthly recurring revenue. It has leverage, which means that you're having less efforts in with bigger output. So leverage, for example, is creating instead of one-on-one -on -one work, creating group or instead of delivering all your content in person, putting your content online and delivering it virtually. These are ways of leveraging your time or leveraging technology. And then finally, it's scalable. It's something that you can continue to add people to without having to invest a whole lot of money in order to scale it bigger. So these are the three things from the big back end. And then I just want to add that after we did that and we got to the end of our first year, because what we'd created from our retreat program was a one year mentoring program for superstars. We call it the superstar inner circle. So what we realized towards the end of our very first year was. All right. I, I, I hope that was helpful. Now, the example you've seen there is example of, for example, a person who is a speaker or who is a, 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 a person adding value to other people, who is mentoring people. So this is a type of a business. But I believe that you, from that, what she said, there are three things you see at the end, the aspect of the issue of having a model that leads to monthly recurring revenue that leads to the aspect of leveraging. How can you provide information, the same information you are providing to every client that come to you? How can you have a system? I'm going to see that later in my presentation. How can you have a process of delivering that without you physically being there? And the third thing she mentioned there is the issue of scalability, which you're going to see in my slides as I as we continue uh, this conversation. So now that takes me to quick, well into what is a sustainable business. I've told you about the issue of the type of business you're looking at, a business that is legitimate, making positive impact in the society. I've told you about what is impact. We're looking at a positive influence, a, a, a long lasting influence. And when I talk about impact, I'm looking at, apart from making change, you are looking at making a positive, adding a positive value in the lives of people. And when we talk about the issue of sustainability, I'm talking about a business you can start that can run even after you have died. A business that is able to make sustaining impact, is able to sustain itself. And those kind of things are what we're kind of quickly going to look at. How do So for me, what's it? business. It is running a business that considers the environmental, the economic, and the institutional criteria in its operations. Now, I forgot to mention to you, I'm the president of the Nigerian Environmental Society in the UK. So in anything I do, I'm thinking of where sustainability, environmental consideration, and which is part of what I, I told you about in my impact your business and making a positive economic impact making impact and also an institutional impact that is what we are looking at in this so for you as a business you'll be looking at okay how can you have a business that will be sustainable it is a business can you please mute yourself somebody is whistling Now, a, a, a business that is sustainable is a business that is concerned not only what you want to push to the market, not what you enjoy selling or doing. No, for your business to be sustainable, it means it must meet the needs of the people. It must meet the needs of the customer. 
It is what the customer needs. It is what, if you meet the needs of the customer, it is then your system, your business can be sustainable. If you are doing a business that is not in line with the needs of the customer, of course, your business will not be sustainable. It means you're like that lady, the business will crash at a particular point, but that's not our intention. And that's why we are putting this together, having this conversation to say, you need to run a business that meets the needs of the customers. You need to run a business that meets the needs of the employee. So if you are even big enough that you have employed a group of people, employed some people, you have a staff, your business must meet the needs of your employee for it to be sustainable. Your business must meet the needs of investors. Maybe you are big enough and you want to scale up and there are some people who are giving you money to buy part of your business. Your business must be meet the needs of the investors that are that ensure that they're putting their money for you. Your business, you must meet the needs of the environment, like I mentioned earlier, a sustaining environment, ensuring that your business does not have negative impact and also that you meet the needs of stakeholders. Of course, your business cannot operate in, an, in a silo in a, in, in, on its own. You are operating in a community. You're operating, for example, for those who own business on campus, um, in Kwara State, on your campus, Kwara State uh, uh, University, um, it will, and all the people, the students union, the lecturers, the, 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 the staff, the staff, maybe lecturers, and also the non-academic staff, you know, there are different stakeholders who are people who your business is finding a way of interacting with. So as you are meeting the needs of these people, in the same way, what risk is your business creating for each of these various uh, people, categories of people? These are important things. So quickly, now, another point of running a sustainable business, I told you sustainability from my own perspective and the lens I'm looking at it today is running a business that can last long. You know, one of the challenge, and why this is why I'm passionate about this, is a common thing that <laughs> is a common thing that in Africa we don't have businesses that that run for hundred years. It's just because of time. I wanted to show you some businesses that have been running for the past seven hundred years. You can Google them. I want to show you some businesses that have been running for the past one thousand two hundred years. Yes, some businesses have been running for 1,200 years. I want to show you some businesses that have been running for 500 years. I wanted to show you some businesses that have been running for 900 years. That is sustainability. The people who created those businesses have even died and gone, and those businesses are still running. And in Africa, part of the challenge we have in that we don't have businesses that are started in Africa, startups in Africa that outwit or outrun, that even run for 50 years or run for 100 years because of all the challenges. And that's why this presentation is trying to provide you ideas, thoughts that could help you to begin to think don't begin to think of a business you are doing now that it should just end with you. Think of the business you are running now on that campus outliving you, your grand great grandchildren being employees of your business, running that business. So how do you do that? Is by having innovative uh, approach, product innovation, thinking of how do my product that I'm offering, how can I meet the needs? How can I be innovative in my product? How can I be, if it's a service you're running, how can I be innovative in the service I offer to uh, my, my client, customers? The issue of relationship innovation. How can I be innovative in the way I relate with my clients, my customers, with my suppliers? How, how, how can I be innovative in the way I deal with my, you know, uh, my, my stakeholders as it were? And also a business, you need to be innovative, environmental impact innovation. How can I be innovative in the way I relate with the environment? In the way we, treat, for example, treat our waste. In the way you treat your waste, in the way you treat and what kind of product or inputs did you get from suppliers? How can you be innovative 
in some of these things. These are things I think that is important. Now, I would crave your indulgence again for us to uh, listen to this one as we continue in this uh, conversation. The coronavirus pandemic has transformed businesses. It has been a huge challenge for many industries and for many organizations, but it has, has also offered some opportunities. So in this video, I want to talk about the six biggest impacts and trends that have come out of the coronavirus crisis that will be very important for businesses going forward. Working from home 2.0. What lots of businesses have experienced is that they had to have people working from home because of the coronavirus pandemic. And lots of businesses are now rethinking their entire business model. They're rethinking, do we still need offices? But if we're really honest with ourselves, productivity has gone up for businesses, but the way people work from home is not necessarily great for everyone. Mm -hmm. There are some people that have amazing offices in their houses they have all the equipment they can do this very well there are lots of people that work on a on a kitchen table that haven't got a comfortable chair so what businesses are now really need to do is then to reimagine their own workspaces their offices and really support people working from home so they need to give them the right office equipment the right computers comfortable chairs the right setup and also yeah. they need to help support everything that goes with for everyone goes more comfortably in the future. Business model innovation. What we need to do now is to really reflect on what are we offering our customers? How do we operate as a business? What we've seen is that lots of industries have been completely transformed during 2020. We will see this in the hospitality industry, in the events industry, and businesses that have carried on thriving are the ones that have been able to react to this really quickly. If you are a restaurant and on day one of lockdown, you really rethought your restaurant and made sure that you have takeout uh, abilities. Um, there are companies like even the Formula One that were producing ventilators. Then this is something needed to do. Think, how is the market shifting and how do we transform our business model? And innovating business model is, I think, more important in 2021 than ever before. Virtual interfaces is another big trend. Will we really think about how can we deliver some of the services in a digital format, especially using things like augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality? Again, during the pandemic, people realize actually do I really need to go into the shop to try on makeup if I can use an, an augmented reality app that allows me to put the makeup on and try and test it really consultation with a fashion advisor if I, if I can try this on in the VR and I can actually place this in the different settings be this a boardroom or an office environment to see what the clothes will actually look like from all different perspectives so this whole try before you buy in this new world of virtual interfaces will continue in 2021 and will transform how businesses offer their services. What businesses have been doing is they've looked at their own business processes and said, where can we take uh, people out of the process where they are not really adding true value? So we've seen this in warehouses, in supply chains. We now have automated vehicles. We have trucks and ships driving and sailing autonomously. And we're seeing this in, in lots of business operations where we now have chatbots that can replace call centers or at least a big part of it. And more and more, what we'll see in 2021 is this white collar automation where we think, okay, if we look at the job of a lawyer, the job of a doctor, for example, which bits can we actually automate? Which bits can we give to artificial intelligence and smart robots? And this will carry on. And we're seeing this already. I work with so many different organizations that are rethinking the way education is delivered, healthcare is delivered, and even many of the services we are used to are delivered through automated interfaces. Going from global to local. 
what we are seeing in this current political and economic climate is that we have seen supply chain disruption. We are seeing between the US and we are seeing being different in Europe. And all of this means that we think, where am I sourcing my towards um, more environmental awareness because what people realize is okay do I really need to ship my food and vegetables from the world or can we talk where it come from and where they are going social engagement what companies need to do is they need to make sure they engage with their customers and potential customers across social media this has become such an important channel especially during the pandemic that we're going through at the moment and businesses that haven't got a strong presence simply feel a bit lost they suddenly have lost access to customers so what we're seeing here is that there's a big push towards a more authentic uh, presence on social media this that is less curated by communication experts but we say this is these are all real people working for our organizations these this is a real behind the scenes footage and especially uh, a big trend that goes with this is actually engaging influencers, not necessarily the massive million um, subscriber influencers, but even micro influencers that are influential in your industry. This is something we need to, as a business, you need to really think about who are the key people that are driving those conversations across social media that have built some trust and how do we engage with them to bring across our message. All right. I hope that was useful. If you want to learn more about any of these trends, head to my website where I have hundreds of articles. Okay. So I hope you, you got something out of, of that. I hope you got something out of that. So the second question, I want to engage you now. If you run a social enterprise, a social enterprise is a, this type of business that is run with the community you, as the main objective. You want to make profit, but you are thinking of helping the community, making the society good. So if you run a, a social enterprise, please type two in the, in the comment in the chat box, in the comment section. If you run any, any product, or maybe you are offering part of your profit you are sharing with uh, patients in the hospital, or you're using part of your profit to help people who are Seek in your hospital or help those who are orphans or help the orphanages. Could you please type two in the comment section? If you are running any kind of this social enterprise, a business that you are running, a going concern that is helping to meet the needs of most, first and foremost, maybe the environment or first and foremost, the, the concern about the welfare of people. Please type two in the comment section. Type two, please, in the comment section. So does it mean all our businesses that we are on, they, you are, all the businesses you run are not with the good, or you're not thinking of the, uh -huh. so I have two persons, so. If you do any business that you're thinking of, Oh, the orphans, the people, who, the, the society, the environment, you want to, you know, common good of the people. All right, we'll just go, we'll just go on because of our time. All right, now I quickly I'll go to the next section, which is has to do with the sustainable development goals. Now you, I, I assume that you know what the SDGs is a group of uh, desired states in which the whole world is concerned about. And uh, to say, this is what we, um, the, for, when I was on campus, it was the Millennium Development Goals, 
we're looking at the millennium, year 2000. But now that has passed, now it has led to sustainable development goals. And in these sustainable development goals, there are 17 principles which the world is aiming to say, we, this is what we aim a sustainable world will look like. This is what we hope that the world will be like, a world with no poverty, no zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, et cetera, et cetera. And I think, and this is also a good template. If you have started a business, is this, this is giving you a template of how you can make an impact in the society and how you can also begin to run your business with any of this rubric, any of these 17 principles in mind to, and in which your business will now be saying that it is sustainable because you are doing thinking of more than just making profit, more than just thinking of yourself and your family and having income, but we are thinking of how to make the world a better place. That is what, so these are 17 various options. And if you are on this call or this, this lecture and you are not running a business, these are 17 options of what you can do to run a business or start a business that is sustainable and will be making a positive impact even in the society. Okay, great. Now, for those of us who are running businesses, the next question or the things you'll be bothered about is scalability. You had it in the, the first lady's presentation, scalable. Can you increase the number of your output? Can you increase the number of the product you deliver? to people, scalability. How do you grow your business? So here are some thoughts of how you can quickly, you know, provide, begin to scale up, begin to increase the number of your output, the amount of money you make from your business. Number one is to put effective systems and processes in place. I'm going to come back again to the because, see, your business cannot run for 1,000 years without processes, systems and processes in which when we remove you as the owner of the business from the business, the business is still running. When we remove you as the creator or the initiator of the business, the business is still running. Why? Because there is effective systems put in place, effective processes put in place. That is number one, it's important. I, have, I know uh, some people who are business people, they live here in the UK. I know one person lives here in the UK and runs a business in Nigeria because she puts systems um, and, 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 and effective processes in place that if without her in the picture, the business is still running. I know someone else who lives in America and is running a business in Nigeria. Why? Because they put in effective systems, effective processes. The business is running even without them being on ground. That is the next thing you need to begin to think about to be able to scale up your business. Number two, build a great team and create the right culture. For you to have to scale up your business, you must have a good team, a good team and the right culture, a right, and what is culture? Obviously, what is culture? Culture, simply put, is it's what the owner of the business permits. That's for if you have an employee, if you have a group of employees, culture is what you permit. If they come late, that is the culture you have permitted. Whatever, if, if, if you are hardworking and you don't allow for any slackness, you ensure that customers are taken care of, that is the culture you are creating. So culture, just take it for me, simply put, is the kind of things you as the owner of the business that you allow or accept. Number, th number three, I get accurate and timely management information. So for you to scale up, there's a need to have accurate and timely information about your customers, about their, you know, it's very important to build relationships. Earlier, I was talking about relationship innovation. It will be wonderful. I'm going to give you another example very soon. It will be wonderful if you can know the birth dates, the birth days of the children of your client, for example, or the birth days of the father of your client your customer, and you can send back dates to them. Now, those are timely, accurate information that helps you to build new relationships. You know, if you know if your, your, your client or customer is married and you are able to remember to send a birthday to the wife or to the husband of your customer, 
Can you imagine how that will go? You are building relationship more than just the amount of the value you are giving to them and the money they are giving to you in exchange. Innovation in building relationship, innovation. Again, lean principles and agile development. The fact that you are running a business and you are making money does not mean you should be spending money, splashing money around. It's to think of how can I deliver my service in a bit cheaper way? How can I deliver my service with less amount of money than the one I am, I am spending now to deliver my product? What can I do? So that is thinking of lean and agile development. Lean principles, delivering things in, 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 in lean and agile principles. Even not more so, you know, earlier, one of the, the guy that spoke earlier, this I showed you, he was thinking of in medical doctors. Now, there are medical doctors, there are ways of doctors see you without you coming into the into the something you know lean and agile even somebody can be in 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 nigeria and a doctor can be in america or india or the uk and perform operation on them see looking at how to ensure that they, you can cut down time of development now this section is important for you to run a sustainable impact, your attitude, the attitude you must exude is very important. It is very important. I cannot overemphasize this aspect. So these are attitudes you as the employer or the, the owner of the business as an entrepreneur must have for you to have a successful, impactful business. Number one is appreciation. You must appreciate, you must have a thing of, if you have staff, working with you, you must appreciate them. If you have uh, suppliers who are working, you must appreciate, you must come to a point of appreciation. It is a good attitude that helps you to run a sustainable, impactful business. Appreciate, appreciate the, your, your clients, appreciate the bank where you get, where you get a loan, appreciate your staff, appreciate your clients, appreciate your customers. Because if your customers are not there, you'll be out of business. Be appreciative. Of, 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 of the things around you. Number two is comprehension. Understand what you have around you. Understand the capability. If you, are, if, you are, if you have employees of your employees, understand the capability, comprehend even the skill set you have, the benefit of the skill set you have, how that skill set is good and be appreciative, appreciative of that. Number three, opportunities. You must be looking for opportunities anywhere you go. As you are going to your class, even though you're a business person, you must be looking for opportunities. Connecting to people, you must be looking for opportunities. For me as a person, reaching out to Mr. Lawal and organizing this session is looking out for opportunities. He's just looking for opportunities. And, and I must appreciate, um, his name is um, um, uh, Adeboye. I think he's Adeboye, uh, who who it was the one I connected to, yes, Samuel Adeboye, who I connected to in 2019 on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, I just connected to him on LinkedIn. I was looking for opportunities. You see, a relationship or a connection in 2019 yielding fruit in 2021. You must be looking for opportunities as you connect to people on LinkedIn, as you connect to people on Facebook, as you connect to people on Instagram. You heard that guy talking about customers also want relationship. They want to know that you are authentic. You must be looking for opportunities anywhere you go as you are connecting to people, looking for opportunities. It is what will ensure that your business is sustainable. It's, so these are attitudes. Again, the attitude of integrity. You must be a person of integrity. You must be, you know, I, I was uh, in, in one of these presentations I gave the other day, I was remembering that when people, and permit me for using this word, you know, Kberegi, I assume you know what is Peregi. So the fact that I live in the West, I don't know I've forgotten Peregi. In which some of the Peregi that they used to measure Gary, it has have been accidented. Intentionally, they've accidented it. They, they've beaten the Peregi to be to be to, to, to reduce the volume, the volume of the Gary or rice that will be sold out. You see, you, you must have integrity. You must have integrity. You must be, if somebody is buying a, a Peregi of rice from you, a Peregi of Gary from you, it must 
must be the value, the, the quantum, the volume that you must be paid for the amount of money you are exchanging. Integrity, you know, integrity, it's important. These are attitudes for you to have a sustainable, impactful business. If you, are, you know, it's important. And the next one, like it is morality. You must run, have an attitude of morality. What is right is right. What is wrong is wrong. You don't need to even go to school to know that, isn't it? So you must run a business from the aspect of morality, of having good morals, of doing the right things, of not cheating your customer, of not cheating your client, not cheating your supplier, of not trying to cut corners. Of You must run and have an attitude of, of good morality. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm running out. I've overshot my time. Um, Again, attitude of people. You must be a people person. If you want to run an impactful business, you must know that, see, your, your, the, your business is for people. It's the number of people. When I'm talking about scalability, it is people, your relationship with people, the way you treat people, the way you, 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 you take care of people as your employee or as customers or as stakeholders or as investors. All these things are human beings. It is people, appreciating people, understanding people that your business can only be sustainable if you take your people well. Your business can only be sustainable if you take care of your customers well. Your, that is when your business will be sustainable. So now what is the process of a sustaining business success? Like I mentioned earlier, to, for a business to last you long, for you to be, to be able to have a business that is last long. The first one is develop processes, systems and structures that can be run, that even if you're not there, the business is running. Develop systems and structures that can run, that when you're not there, the business is still running. Number two, document your processes, which is actually knowledge management. Steps that you need to be done or how things are done. Document it so that when a staff comes, a new staff, a new employee, they can quickly understand, read through the document, and the onboarding of a new staff will be fast and, 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 and seamless for them to get to go. Again, like you had the first lady I showed you, she, for her to have a new business model, she got a mentor. You might need to seek out a mentor to be able to help you. And I believe this relationship we are having today is starting a new mentorship opportunity from the Africa Coaching and Mentorship Initiative for help to help midwife and guide you in the right direction of ensuring that your business is sustainable. Your business is still ex existing after a hundred years of when it was started. Last out, seek out a mentee. So don't just you seek out a mentor. When your business is sustaining and you are improving, you are scaling, don't end it there. Pay it forward. Look out for somebody who also is running a business for your business to, to, to mentor. You see, as you teach somebody, you get better. You, you look out for somebody to, to, to take care of, somebody. teach them the process so that you can be able to find a way, the things working for you, you can replicate them quickly in other people's business. These are processes that are important. Now quickly, uh, this is an example I mentioned earlier about appreciation. There are habits that successful business people have. See, for example, here, a former, the former Home Depot CEO, Frank Blake, used to set aside several hours every Sunday to write a thank you note, handwritten, not printed with computer, to stand out employees. He wrote not just from to managers, but even those people who are working in the up company who are hourly associates, those who work for part-time people, who work just two hours, three hours. Over the course of his tenure or at the company, Blake estimates he wrote at least 25,000 notes. And he said, when he goes around the company, I will see the notes framed at the stores. They are appreciative. People feel loved when they are appreciative when they are appreciated. So learn this habit of appreciation. Like I told you, it's a wonderful habit. You cannot even over, under, over, underestimate where it will take you to. When you appreciate things around you, it will take you a long way. And this company, this particular man ran this company and it ensured, number two, something similar to that,
no, sorry about that. Uh, I've already gone through this section. I'm over short. I'm rounding up now. Number two, similarly, oh, I will just leave it because of time. You can read it. When I send you the slide, you can read it. Now, number three, I want to engage you now. If your business makes an approximately 100,000 Naira in monthly sales, type three in the comments. If your business, you make up to 100,000 Naira or more in sales monthly, type three in the comments. If your business makes 100,000 Naira or more monthly, type three in the comments. If you make 100,000 or more on a monthly sales in your business, type three in the comments. I'll run now. Uh, we'll have to. So quickly, some examples of sustainable business that are making positive impact. Quickly, I, and interestingly enough, I didn't just, it was because I planned it. These are ladies doing great things. You can check them online. Planet 3R. Can you imagine where the clothes she's putting on came from? Do you have any idea? All the things she's wearing, the clothes she's wearing, and all these bags, you will see where they came from. I will not tell you. You will see and find yourself. She's even creating, uh, you can check her on Instagram, planet underscore three or Facebook. She's creating this wall clock. You could see what, that's a loom. She, she does Ashoki, she's in Oyo State. And this thing she's doing, she's gotten an award from the president of, vice president of Nigeria. As the best innovative SME, she's got an award from Africa, from Europe, from all over the world. Why? You will see the reason now. That is the reason why. Does that resonate with you? The nylon, the pure water, you buy pure water and the pure water sachet you throw about. The clothes she's putting on is from that pure water sachet. Those bags are from pure water sachet. That slippers there is from pure water sachet. She's turning pure water sachet to make looms, to make the wool. The cotton, which is I've been cutting, it is what she used to create and make clothes. Can you see sustainability? Solving the environmental impact, creating products that is meeting the needs of people, of school children, clothing, solving the problem from what? From what you can class as waste. And you know the talent we have, environmental waste of nylon, environmental waste of pure water sachet, that is added joker for you, added joker links in Ojo State. Number two, quickly, this is in Zambi Mati. In Zambi also is create solving problem. Why? Look at what she's holding. What she's holding are interlocking blocks, which is created from, you can see the, at the background, wastes, rubber, plastic waste is what she's using to create this meeting needs of people. You can check her online, you see? Creating interlocking blocks. These interlocking blocks are long lasting. And I didn't include on this, uh, on this call. You can check out a lady also in Abuja who is doing exactly the same thing. Even though she's, she's just using this mechanized, but she's also going forward, creating interlocking blocks that will be long lasting, that will not break for the environment. This is another lady in Kenya. Now, the first lady is in Oyo State, Nigeria. The second lady is in Kenya. This third lady also in Kenya. This lady resigned from the bank. Resigned from the bank to start this. Look at what she's doing. She's creating a name, name of her company is Echo Post, Sustainable Living. She's creating all these things from waste, rubber waste, to create fence. And she's getting award all around. That, that, that is a fence that was created from plastic rubber. So the point is that you can make a positive change on the environment. You can run a business that will be sustainable, sustainable in a helping the environment, sustainable in making change to the environment and making the world 
a better place. So I begin to round up now. Now, if you are, have employees, if you have employees, you must, for you to be sustainable, you must be concerned about the wellness of your employees. That your employees are, like you mentioned, that lady, that young man, man mentioned, because now we are working from home and everything, it's affecting the mental well being of employees. We're not working, doing more, even though the business are, are so. It's important encouraging the wellness programs in your workplace, in your among your, will determine that you are, you know, has benefit for employees and employers alike, as correlation can be drawn between happiness, health, and overall productivity. I'm running up now. I know I've overshot my time. A lot of things incentivize for progress among your employees. Give them incentives when they do things that ask about, about their well-being promote health education in the environment, acknowledge the existence of burnout and mental illness if in employees are delivering. So acknowledge it, know that it exists and reshape your working environment to have, that the people should know that you are a business that is concerned about the wellness, the well-being of your apprentices, of your employees. Preventing public health risk is important. I am I'm running up now. So quickly, what next? After all these things we have said, what next, what next, what next? You need to connect with other businesses who are championing sustainability, who are doing things that will make a, the world a better place, and who are doing things that will ensure that there's longevity, that businesses run in Africa must not just die after the business owners die. They must continue to run, like the examples I've told you, run for 500 years, 100 years, 1,000 years. You need to begin to assess your unique gifts and strengths and interests and begin to run businesses that will come in line with that. You need also to begin to assess available problems. There are problems everywhere. I run a show on Instagram. It's called The Mentor Show on Facebook and on The Mentor Show. Now, on this show, part of the things which we do is telling people to say, you, need, you were born to solve a problem. You were born to solve a problem. Have you discovered the problem you were born to solve? Assess problems around. You could see those examples I gave you. These people knew that there was a problem. There's a problem of waste of all this plastic, and they came up with both solutions to solve them. So quickly, be consistent with the inner goodness and ethical principles. Be consistent with the inner goodness and ethical principles. And also, I'm a person of faith. You must ensure that your business is in line with, is making God to smile. You must ensure that your business is ensuring that making God to smile. If your business is making God to cry, and making human beings to cry, then you must know that you are doing what is not God is not happy with, and ensure that your business is making is in line with God's will and is good and making people to cry. And if you don't know how this and done, you can consult us, consult or further experts. So quickly, in conclusion, until your business is run sustainably, the existence of that business it has no meaning. Even though you might be making five million, you might be making more money. It has no meaning. Why? Because purpose is the source of fulfillment. When you are doing a business that is affecting purpose, making life, taking lives of people, it is then you can be sure that you are making, running a sustainable business that is making positive impact in the community. So thank you very much uh, for your time. I appreciate you. I know I've run, uh, Mr. President, I'm sorry. I've overshot my time that we agreed. Uh, quite a lot of things packed in. So questions and answer. So we'll take questions and answer now. Questions and answer now. And comments, Alunge, okay, it was, you said it was a mistake earlier. Sorry, I had to rush. I know quite a lot of things we've packed in. Oh, we've reduced from 27 to 10, no problem. But I hope this has been helpful to you. And for those who, I know data could be a challenge, uh, but I hope this has been helpful to you. Do we have questions and answer? Any questions? or comments.
Mr. John Iyanu Odemi, any question or comments? Don Tayo, any question or comments? Any question or comments? Now it's, it's often said that when you, when one when someone delivers a presentation and there are no comments or question, it's either that the presentation was so good, or <laughs> uh, or the person did not ex and explain everything, or the person did not explain well the things well enough. Let me look at the uh, things I, I, I was I couldn't look at um, Oh, Lawa said I should round up about 12.02. Well, sorry about that. It's quite um, Yeah, Damat says, um, Lawa says, wow, this is amazing. Um, uh, be more audible. Does it mean that you didn't hear me? Honestly, it's great to me doing that. Mm. Ajibo, did you mean you didn't hear me? Innovation attracts Abishola Oladile says, innovation attracts more than one field of education. And in school, we are just taught a single line that can, in line, what can we do to push forward our ideas? Cause no man is an island. Okay. Um, Abishola, I, um, if I understand your question very well, of course, yes, innovation is more than just in the aspect of, in the field of education. Um, there is innovation in every area. And now the point we're making is that in the school, the school, which the school has not helped you to look at, to widen, as it were, widen your horizon to other areas of how you can be innovative. And I think it is the reason why this kind of a, um, session is coming up for you to know that there are other areas and other things you can, you can do or you can look at to be able to ensure that, um, if, if I may ask, Abisola, please, what course are you doing? Abisola, what course are you doing? Oh, graduate of economics, okay, yeah. So as a graduate of economics, you could be looking at, okay, are you running a business currently? You know, are you running a business currently? So if you run a business currently, like I've given that uh, idea, the point I made about how can you be innovative? How can you be innovative in the business in which you run? The point I made about uh, innovation, how can you be innovative? And I believe strongly that this is the reason why this time might not be enough, but there is a platform, the, I hope you have all joined the, uh, the um, Telegram section, where we'll continue the mentorship opportunities of brainstorming and getting ideas. So Abisola, we can have this conversation continue after now, in which we look at, okay, what business you are doing, Okay, I did to me, I didn't care. It's actually a good session. Personally, it has motivated me to keep going. Okay, even though it hasn't been easy, starting and maintaining a business, particularly here in Nigeria, it is very frustrating, I understand, with all the various um, changes in, um, yeah. How can this lecture work? Okay, no, okay, sorry. Uh, it is very frustrating, thoughts of giving up every now and then. Please don't give up. That's part of why this session is coming up. Um, I'm running an online shopping.
for students and graduates for digital workplace. How can this lecture to improve my business? It's for you to look at how can you meet the needs? How can you deliver the needs of this online shopping? The question of online shopping, so the delivery, do they pay for delivery? Mr. Lawa, so sorry, I know I've overshot the time. We have a lot of things packed in and, and, and but I hope it's valuable. It's more like, I don't know if, if you've been there before in which, so I when you have an opportunity and just say, I must deliver, you must, you know, when you are, I don't know any of you, if you, you explained it, force feeding. Do you understand force, what is force feeding? My mom, my mom, Mama Rominba, Mama Roma, you know, when uh, Rawaba, <laughs> sorry, so sorry, I know I have overshot this time. Now, so the question you made, uh, the question, John Iyanwala Odeyemi, you run an online shopping uh, business for, for students and graduates for digital workplace. What does that mean? Do you run, is it a service or is it a product? If it's a service or a product, if it's a product, the question is how do you deliver those, when they buy, when they purchase online, do you offer to them free? Do you deliver to them free? Do you have, or they pick out to pick it up? You need to find a way of how you deliver the product to them in a, in a better way, in a new way, and see how, I, I don't understand your question, I don't know if it's a service, and if it's a service, how, what additional value can you add to uh, your, uh, your, your, your clients? We can have this conversation outside this place, and I know if you join the Telegram, we can be able to provide more clear. Uh, don't I say, well done, sir. You have, you have really done a good job for us. If we are thinking about project development plan, what does it, does it, now, I don't know what you mean by, if you're talking about project development plan, what does, I believe, what does those mean or what does it mean? Now, if you are referring to my slides, uh, part of the thing I mentioned about, did I mention anything about, talking about pro, uh, process, process, I mentioned about process development, developing a system that can, can continue to deliver, you meet the needs of your customers without you being physically there. You skip my question, but why don't we have what's group for we? Is that, a, do you mean WhatsApp group? You skip my question, but why don't we have a WhatsApp, I believe maybe WhatsApp group for we, the question, well, that you should ask your president, uh, are we are, I'm an outsider, so the president will be able to answer that question of why, do, why you don't have WhatsApp group for, I believe that's what you're asking, Damad, having a WhatsApp group for, okay, WhatsApp group, yeah. It, it, your president will be able to answer that, to have a WhatsApp group for Kwasu students. But we can be continue this conversation and we can continue to provide appropriate advice or, or, or counsel uh, as the case may be. I hope I've not, for, if there's any other question, uh, please, Abisola, we need to know the kind of um, um, you do. You run a business. What kind of business do you do, Abisola? Okay, Damar is asking, what's the impact of this meeting as a whole to us as a student who intends starting a business here in Malete? Now, I've already given you, for that's, that's the question you asked, but you see, I've shared with you about the impact, look at the, the, the sustainable development goals. What are kind of business, now on, you can see that on my screen, what kind of business can you do? What, and I said at the initial, what is the needs of the customer? So if you're thinking of starting a business in Malete, the question is what are the needs of the people living in Malete? There is the issue of poverty in Malete. There's the issue of hunger in Malete. There's the issue of water. Sustainable development goal, you could see there, there's life below water. There's the issue of education in Molete, clean water, clean sanitation, clean water, number six, sustain, uh, sanitation. In the issue of sustainable, uh, uh, sanitation and clean water needed in Molete. So uh, uh, there, there are up a lot of uh, a lot of business that you can think about for you who is thinking to just start a business. 
there are a lot of options you can draw from as, as a person who is intent to start a business. I hope that, but we can continue this conversation after now, uh, Damag, we can continue this conversation uh, after now. So Abyssalife will know the kind of business you run, we can be able to provide uh, uh, appropriate guidance and how can you have it? Yes, Ian I will send these slides to your president and uh, we can make it available to you. My contact, I, I will send and then for, okay. Uh, I will send, I will send those, the slides to you. And I'll be able to do that. Okay, Abisola, you are a pastry chef. Okay, interesting. So as a pastry chef, the question you should look at is that, are your, are your, you know, pastry is always is a challenge, you know. Pastry often leads to people being, uh, it affects overweight, obese, and all those stuff. So can you think of being innovative? I know that my, um, my, my wife uh, wants to eat cake or some kind of meal, but those kind of meal are, they, they are, they fattening. So what does she come? She research on YouTube and she now uses what you call oatmeal, you know, oatmeal to produce what could have been used with flour, replacing oatmeal with flour because oatmeal will not fatten you. Oatmeal is healthy. It will be broken down easily. So as a pastry chef, you might begin to think of innovation, of using things, substitutes that will be healthy, more healthy to people uh, than, than what you are using now. Um, hope we'll be getting the slides. Yes, you added to be, you'll get the slides uh, and, and the short videos. Uh, well, this video I know is, is quite huge, but we'll be able to find a way of um, Okay, Yanulua says Kwasu Connect, and this is my email address. Now, the WhatsApp group is this WhatsApp group for Kwasu or for you, John Yanu Odeyemi? Is this for you or, or, for, or for the body or for your. Um, now, I, I know we have overshot our time, and I'm, I'm, I must apologize. But you know, when you and when you want to deliver value, you you get to that point in which you just feel that you need to provide appropriate and enough value that you find that your time with me this particular day will be uh, will be is not wasted. So I hope uh, Murita Lajidi, that is my son, my namesake. Wow, interesting. I would like to 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 speak to Murita Lai. He's just joining his computer audio. So is there any other question? Now all the questions, if there, if you are, if your questions have not been answered, um, we can again move this conversation to, uh, like we said, to Telegram or to WhatsApp. Samuel or Lagunji, welcome. We're just ending, rounding up now. And that we thank every one of you who have joined today. So for those of you who are just about to start a business, you will get this slide and you can be able to use any of the sustainable development goals. Don't forget, you are in a business when you meet the needs of other people. If you don't meet the needs of other people and you, you're not supplying their needs, you are not in business. <laughs> it's only when you meet the needs of people that you can say that you are in business. All right, so Mr. Lawal, thank you very much for the lecture. More strength for this meeting, thank you. We need a group for the body. Okay, Mr. Lawal. Um, thank you very much. Yes, I'm with you. Okay, I, I'm done. Um, um, thank you very much for the wonderful program. We really appreciate um, your presence here. And I'm sure one or two things must have been learned by each and every one of us on this platform today. I can see most of our students are giving good comments and some of them are even sharing their experience in their various businesses here. 
and I know it will not just end here. It will it will go as far as having a mentorship program with them. It will go as far as sharing scholarship opportunities and what have you. So thank you very much. Is there any time we are likely to have this kind of session again, sir? I'm sorry, I'm muted. So sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm muted. So, um, uh, if, uh, if there is an um, opportunity of letting me know what we need, what areas we need, we can look at all we have presented today and look at a particular section that is more appropriate. You know, like I said, it is good to prevent to present what is so. It is what is the need, your need that will determine what we're going to be talking about. What will be your need? So you are the one that will need to yes, try yes, yes. this. Because it is useless for me to just come and say, I think in my mind, I want to talk about this. If that is not your need, it will be a wasted time. And that's how a business, a business can only be successful. Oh, okay. Like Damad, who mentioned about in Molete, go around Molete, look at what are the needs of the people in Molete. For your business to be successful, it must be what is needed. Not what you think is needed. There oh. must be enough people that will be willing to pay you money for the service you want to render. Okay, um, thank you very much. Actually, we have a platform for this program, and I know most of our students have been actively participating in this platform we created for them. So we will we'll get back to you on what we think is the necessary thing to talk about as far as students' development, impact, and value creation is concerned. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. So I, I think Mr. I, I Mr. Think Mr. Think we should... so go ahead. You ever say something, me, sir? Yes, I thought you were, you were speaking. I wanted to. No, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm done. I said. Okay, I wanted to greet Mr. Monitor Lad. You know, with my namesake. Because it's. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, so thank that's, you everybody. Yes. I really appreciate your time. Yes, Please, I want to. We can end. You can. You can. We can. We, can, we are free to go if you want to leave. You can leave. Um, and um, if there's any question, I'm still here. I'm still here. Um, for any question, to answer any question. Yes, yes. So before we leave, I want to appreciate um the public relations officer at Job Water is the one in charge of the publicity of the program from the beginning to. Now he has been updating our students, he has been creating the platforms and he has been doing everything in his, in his capacity to make sure the program is a success. So, and we also have the general secretary of the student union here, he has been with us from the beginning to the end, active participants. We have Damad here, he has who, been with who, us from the beginning. Who is the secretary general? Uh, this is the favor of Labode, the secretary Fever general. Labode. Okay, all right. Okay. And then we have, I think Damar has uh, been from the beginning to the end, he has been very, very active. Yeah, Damar has been And active. then we also have um, the, we have the vice president here, you know, I introduced that earlier. Yeah, Adenike. Um, Adetumbi Adenike, yeah. yes. And we have Alunge Balki, she has been using her hands up since, I don't know why she's not putting them down yet. I hope your hand is not paying you, Balki. Yes. yes. <laughs> No, 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 definitely your hands are not in her. Uh, so we have Olan Waji Yusu, we have Ibn Ola, we have Dayo Taiwo, we have John Iyanu Odeyemi, so we have Mutala Ajide, we have Abisola Ola Dede, we have a lot of people here that have been with us from the beginning to the end. So thank you very much for participating in today's program. We really appreciate it and will keep us updated on the next time we'll be having this amazing program again so thank you if you want to leave the platform now let you me, can leave us we have come to the end of this let session me share with yes you. sir hold on let me share with you my youtube channel 
I, I run uh, okay. I run a mentorship. Uh, it, well, it's part of mentorship for those who are interested in research, uh, research and uh, PhD research or master's program. So, sir, so someone, someone asked, someone asked if we can have a copy of the video. Yes, I would, I would, uh, you know, you, of course it will be, it's huge, but I would um, get the video and uh, Maybe send it to you through uh, WeChat, a uh, WeTransfer rather. Is is it? Now that's the, that's my YouTube channel. On that YouTube channel, which I just sent it to, oh, yes, is provide advice for those who are doing a master's program or doing a PhD, in which we provide advice and guidance. Various videos about. 54 videos of various aspects of the research process is, is in that place for those who are, if you, so if you know anybody who is doing a master's program, and also you can also learn from it. Those of you who are doing for maybe your BSc, uh, TCs and things like that, you can also learn from it. For those who are doing master's or doing PhD, you can share that link with them. And uh, we'll go to see how we can, and if there's any question, can we have a copy of the video? Yes. Yes. Someone asked for your Instagram page. My Instagram page is at Dr. Underscore Olushola. And I'm on LinkedIn also. You can follow me on, on LinkedIn. Uh, and the so thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate it. If, if today, Mr. Lawak, oh, if you only me and Mr. Lawak are here today, what are we going to do? So we really appreciate you. Like one of the points I mentioned in the yes. attitude of a successful business person, appreciation, appreciation, appreciation. So I really appreciate everyone who has spent time to be here. And I hope this has been valuable to you and helpful to you. I'm open to advice or anything you think any idea you can bring so many idea with me i can be able to uh, to provide more support uh, to in any area which you are interested is that okay all right thank you so so much everybody mr jide what course are you doing so anybody who wants to leave can leave uh, damad we need to speak you that is interested in having a business uh, in molite Mr. Ajide, what course are you doing? Damad, what are the things running? What are the things that you are thinking about? Uh, I'm kind of an investor. Ah, you are very low. Your voice is low. Uh, can you hear me now? You have to speak, maybe speak loud. Your yeah. voice is very low. Can you hear me better now? Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Um, I by name Mutala Jide. My course is uh, history. History? history and, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Are you from where? From Omukbo? No, I'm from Okiode. Okiode? Oh, that's close to I'm from Ibo. So Okiode is just behind us there. Yes. Okay. I'm from, I'm from Ileolao Shibikon in Ibo. So perhaps your family can know I'm from Ilola Shibikon in Igbo. Okay, okay. We are, we are from uh, semi Igbo, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Damad, you, you mentioned about the business you're looking at starting in Malete. I yeah. somehow Malete. Your voice again has gone. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I don't know how to use the equipment. I'm trying my best. Um, I just feel there should be a place where um, the agriculture should be taken to. Agriculture? Yes, yeah, sir. Is that the course you are doing? No, that's not the course I'm doing. But like now, said, did you yeah, go? I, I didn't hear you. You said you, you went for a course or something about that? About what, sir? You said you mentioned something about agriculture. Yes, as a whole, generally. Okay. 
that is something we should try to look into. That's what I feel. Okay, 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 okay. So I started on this uh, fish pond of a thing, which um, currently I'm, I'm actually at the harvest period, but I'm just- You're already harvesting fishes in your fish pond. But yeah, but I'm not interested in that right now. I want to like make sure that it's kind of a company and not just something that will start and when I'm done with schooling, the business will kind of run down. So the business has started, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, and, next month we we'll make it a year. And, and it has started, and now you have grown the, the fishes up to a point now that you are already investing to sell. Yeah, yes, sir. Up to that, the period of investing it. Okay, that is excellent. And now you have lost interest in it. No, I didn't lose interest. Like I kind of I want it to be something that when I'm done with school, it okay. can continue. It continue. It, that is that is the issue of um, sustainability and scalability. Yes, so, so I'm actually not investing it right now. I'm kind of making some things that will make it to last long. But don't forget that I have you. I don't know. Maybe you find out in your conversation with people. You need to find a way of investing the young ones because the big ones can eat the small ones. Have you have you been told that? Yes, sir. <laughs> so if you intend leaving them in the place, at the end of the day. It might you might be losing your money. You might need to be need to separate them, even though if you don't want to invest them, ensure that the small ones are removed. And I if you're thinking of that yesterday, sir. are you you did that yesterday? I did that yesterday. Sir. Okay. Are you using uh, is your pond in the ground or you are using a molded block up? I build a pond. You build a, a concrete a, a, the concrete pond. Sir. A concrete pond. Okay, okay. Yes, so that is that is excellent. You're already doing great with that business you are running. That is, and you know, begin to see yourself supplying hotels because hotels are the ones that exactly, you know, sir. Uh -huh, hotels are the ones who they need some of these things. Big hotels, quarter hotels, uh, and all other hotels. But you see, you must continue. So. For you to be sustainable, you now begin to look out for the the feed. How can you get get the cheap lean? When I mentioned lean lean process, how can you get the cheap the feed cheaper? So if you are buying the feed correctly now, you can begin to produce your own feed. Do you know that? In which you grind yes, you grind um, uh, granules. Um, a lot of things you can you grind together. Research into it. I I am losing my my more information. I know that I have somebody who ha who does it. So in which you you get you get grinding machine, you grind granite and all those things. You create your own feed. That will reduce the cost of money you are using to buy feed. That will reduce it. So that is already what we mean about lean process. You are reducing the cost of money of buying feed then you think also about the issue of what can you do to cost price the, the cost cost the, the the cost you have that is going into the business currently these are the things you begin to look at how can i cut costs how can i cut costs when you're thinking of cutting costs it means you are helping you to think of how can i increase my capacity so if you think of okay you want to build you want to increase have more span, uh, uh, fund, fund. Now, because you did block work, block work is expensive, isn't it? You might think, okay, instead of using block um, pond, you might go and get a, a GP, you know what they call GP, GP tank. Yeah, the tank. Yeah, people buy GP tank, cut the head and use it also. <laughs> that is, is cheaper than doing a block work. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you begin to think of what can you do and cut costs in anything, in any way of which I hope these small things I've given you. If you if you ask questions and, and ask people, I think it will it will help more. And also, you if you want to scale up, do you have a Facebook page? Do you have a link Instagram page that you had in one of the presentations, one of the video versions? People want customers. Do you have? I haven't. 
I have a lady on. Come again. I'm not taking it to any media. Any I'm not hearing you. It's not any social media. Ah, so if you want to scale up, you need to just show. Is it uh, what kind of fish? Is it tilapia or is it um, catfish? Catfish, aha. Uh -huh. So in which you need to, if you want to scale up, increase the number of your, your clientele by the time you, when you are ready, you need to have an Instagram page in which your headshots there will be the, the, the catfish itself. For them to know this is what you are, what is what you are selling. In which you begin, to, you show the process of the, the you, begin, you create a YouTube video or small small video of your process for them to know that this is what you are doing. That is called branding. You are branding yourself for them to think of. If you are thinking of uh, fish, they think of demand. If you are thinking of this, so you do you create small small videos of oh this is how you um, fingerlings. I just got in the new fingerlings. We are doing our fingerlings. This is how you are treating our fingerlings. Or we are investing. You do videos of all these small, small videos. One minute, less than one minute, two minutes to create a brand on your Instagram page, on your Facebook page. Create even a LinkedIn page for your company. Create a LinkedIn page for your company. Professionals can be able to know that they can find your business on LinkedIn, on Instagram on Facebook, so in which you create, if you are doing all this, but when you are investing, you do videos, document all these processes, and so people can be able to know what you are doing. So this, I, I believe with this small advice. Okay, Henry Bravo said, I came late, but with little I heard right now, you have learned a lot. Well, Henry, don't worry. Um, I will find a way of getting the um, getting the uh, the video out. The slides will be sent to your president, and he can be able to share with you. He can be able to share with you. It's, it's it, you know scalability is always a challenge when it comes to uh, uh, businesses increasing how to how to go to the next level, how to go to the next level, and how to begin to make ensure that your business wrong uh, well. IMS, what business are you into? What business are you into? You are muted. IMS, what business are you into or what business do you want to start? Henry Bravo. Henry Bravo, what business are you into or what business are you about to start? Well done, sir. Yeah. Um, I'm not yet into any business yet. I just want to have an idea and lay down some like foundation yet. So no idea yet for now, but I would like to go into like poultry business. So kind of <laughs> why do you want to go to poultry business? uh it's kind of more um economical like that kind of more economical but it has stress economical um, in a way you know um poultry business you can actually use the egg um to serve the um, um people while the chicken like the meat and everything it does this it's actually okay so that's why i feel like going to eat the way you are speaking bravo uh i'm not yes, sure that you have the you'll be able to withstand because whatever you want to do, you must have, I'll come to you, Tamar. You must, you must have done research. Are you aware that if you go into poultry business, there are sicknesses that can, and I'm not being pessimistic here. I'm not being pessimistic. I'm not Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I just want you to be, be, yes, real, be real, be real. Are you aware that yes, sir. there are times in which, uh, 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 what do they call it? Uh, it can, um, sickness they call it that takes to, that kills chicken that can kill all your all your birds. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you yes, need. Yes, I know, I know. So you need to not just say I, I like it because of this. You must have, understand your why. And the key point I mentioned, like I do mention on my Instagram, on the mentor show on Instagram, on Facebook and and YouTube, is why were you born? Why were you born? 
Why were you born? What is the reason for your? So I have, so I have this, I have this that um, poultry business. I'm not actually going to it. I just want to like see like um, a company that I'll just invest in it because normally I'm doing what I just want to. What I want to do normally is event planning, um, like this HR stuff. So I have already, I'm already um, doing um, classes, taking courses for it, for this event planning. So by going to the event planning, you have some fund or budget. I'll be able to invest in the poetry. I will not be working directly. Okay. That's, I just want to have some energy. Yeah, that's, that's what I want to say. Now, now you are going to another point in which you are, if you are doing a business in which you get people to do it for you. Yes, yes. Like I mentioned the issue of integrity. I mentioned the issue of uh, um, uh, uh, morality. Are you sure yes, sir. the people you are getting to it will have the same ethics, morality, and not be finishing? I don't know if you saw the video online of a woman who works in a poultry company and packs egg. I don't know if you saw the video. I watched the video here in the UK. She packs yes, egg. They were bringing egg out of under <laughs> and bringing egg. Uh -huh. A big, you know. How would that the owner of the business survive when a woman, a staff, has already carried up to five crates of egg? So the issue, uh, yes, the issue of morality, the issue, and that's why I'm saying I'm a person of faith. And anything you do, any business you do, your morality, your faith, your what will God think about it must come into the picture, because. You, you cannot be doing so, so wickedness to a fellow human being and because you only you, all you want to do is just, to get, just make money. No, no. That money will not... Mm -hmm. If you have all the money in the world, what, what, it will not solve... It will not take you to, to anywhere. If one sickness, if you have all the money in the world, yes, sir, yes, sir. You know, during this COVID, people that were billionaires, they died. If you have sickness, all the money cannot solve cannot remove the sickness from you. So we need to re re yes, reset ourselves and look at our, our, our motive and what we do. Damad, back to you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. So we can continue this conversation later, Henry, uh, after now. Damad. Yeah, concerning that. Uh, yeah, your volume again. Sorry, I forgot. Mm. Concerning the poultry business, that's what I want to talk about. Okay, yeah. I have tried that before. Okay, go ahead, share with us your experience. So, Henry, listen to who explains from Damad. I'm also, I'm also a student. You're also a student, like him. I'm I, a know student. Student. I know you're a student. I know all of you are students, of course, so I know. No, there are some graduates here, sir. Okay, there are some graduates. Who are the graduates here? At all, eh? we're all together. So the thing is, um, the poetry of the thing is not just about saying that okay, you went to this farm, you can see eggs, they are selling it. The business is cool as it is. There are a lot of things that actually a farmer wouldn't want to tell you that mm. he or she is facing. For instance, now there are, I think during February period or the time, is it pox or what was around? I heard of a farmer in Illorian year that lost about 8,000 birds. 8,000 birds? Wow. Yes, in just a day. And the reason why I was able to even know about that was that I lost about, I think, 15 birds. And I was already shouting. <laughs> so, I was like, what, what are you saying? So he was showing me chat of one of his um, customers that was telling him that he just lost 3,000. I was like, ah, and he's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm the one, <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to talk. Oh, that is that. Uh, so stuff like that. The business look, look, it looks very, very lucrative. You really want to every make... business have that push, have that challenge. It's for so you to be re ready for it. Yeah. It's for you to know huh? the risk. No, like I mentioned, the risk. Know the risk and be prepared for it. And say, okay, how can I reduce and re mitigate? What can you do to ensure that the number of your beds are, are you know? So, yeah, sorry for cutting you, Tamad. Go ahead. It's always like that. And even if you, if you are talking about, uh, okay, the disease, you know when the disease will be around, you won't have your bed. What about the people you employ there? Yes, the people you employ, they come, yeah. Even yeah. at night, they might just come at your back, fat eggs, you just come and be like, ah, okay, these people, that these beds will drop today. Probably something is wrong. 
Meanwhile, there's nothing wrong. Probably that even they won't fit in the egg. You 